Good morning. I'm Sherry Boston, DeKalb County District Attorney. Thank you so much for joining us. I am here today to announce a break in a homicide cold case dating back nearly 30 years and to share an exciting new collaboration in the effort to solve cold cases in DeKalb County. On September 16, 1993, the remains of a woman were found in a wooded area behind the Fairfield Inn, now the Quality Inn Northlake, and a vacant medical office near Ranchwood Drive and Parkland Drive in the Tucker area. The body was found behind an electrical unit covered in pine straw and branches, which appeared to have been deliberately placed in an effort to conceal the body. The remains were in an advanced state of decomposition. After an autopsy, the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office concluded that the remains likely belonged to a Caucasian woman between the ages of 35 and 40. It was estimated that the woman had been deceased between two weeks and three months prior to being found. She had sustained traumatic injury to the facial area as well as a neck fracture that may indicate pressure had been applied to the neck. The cause of death is suspected to be blunt force trauma. No identification was found near the body. However, the, however, the victim had extensive dental work, including gold caps, gold teeth, and a gold bridge, as well as wisdom teeth that had been removed. A left hip replacement could have caused the victim to also have an unusual gait. Despite law enforcement efforts at the time, the woman found on September 16, 1993, was never identified, and her case ran cold. Today, nearly 30 years later, I am grateful to share that our victim has been identified as Rebecca Becky Burke, a 15-year-old woman who was last known to reside in Cobb County in the Marietta or Smyrna area. Becky was identified through DNA testing funded as a part of a collaboration between the National Missing and Unidentified Person System, name us, and OFRAM and linked to a family member. She was ultimately identified through an emerging investigative technique called Forensic Genetic Genealogy, or FIG, that combines technological advancements in DNA analysis and searching with traditional genealogy research. FIG is a unique investigative method that can generate leads to identify unknown suspects and help identify the remains of homicide victims where traditional law enforcement ID methods have failed. FIG was first used to identify the Golden State Killer in 2018 and has since been utilized to solve over 600 cases and bring justice to numerous victims of violent crime, such as rape and murder. We can finally put a name and a face with this rendering, but the work doesn't end here. Exactly what happened to Becky Burke? We are currently seeking the public's assistance. Do you know Becky Burke? Or did you interact with her in the days and months leading up to her death in the summer or early fall of 1993. Are you familiar with either the Fairfield Inn at that time, now known as the Quality Inn of North Lake, or the medical office that was vacant in the area of Ranchwood Drive and Parkland Drive in Tucker? Do you know anyone that might have worked or spent time at the Fairfield Inn during the summer and early fall of 1993? We are asking anyone who may have known or interacted with Ms. Burke around the time of her death to please call our cold case tip line and you can remain anonymous. That number is 404-371-2444. So exactly how did we get here today? And how does identifying Becky relate to our larger mission of solving cold cases in DeKalb County? Last July, we invited you to share that we had identified the remains of William Deshaun Hamilton and indicted his mother in that homicide. William, only six years old at the time of his death, was found near a church cemetery in Decatur 
24 years ago in a case that captured the attention of hearts of many in, up, in our community as well as nationally. Working alongside several of our partners who are here with us to, today to identify William and solve his murder had us all asking, how could we ensure justice and closure for more cold case victims? This desire led to the formation of the DeKalb County Cold Case Task Force, a coalition consisting of staff from the DA's office, the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's office, the FBI, the GBI, the DeKalb County Police Department, and a private lab partner, Innovative Forensic Investigations. It is this team that worked with NamUs and OFRAM to identify our cold case victim, Becky Burke and continues to work diligently to solve her murder. Cold case work takes determination, timing, and funding. And today I'm pleased to announce that the DeKalb County District Attorney's Office has been awarded a three-year missing and unidentified human remains program grant in the amount of $500,000 to identify the remains of 27 individuals found in DeKalb County. The funding provided by the U.S. Department of Justice, the Office of Justice Programs, and the Bureau of Justice Assistance is intended for use in improving the reporting, transportation, processing, and identification of missing persons and un unidentified human remains. Our office is only is one of only six entities nationally to receive a grant through the Missing and Unidentified Human Remains Program. And we are the only prosecutor's office to receive this award. The task force will use these funds to catalog, report, test, identify, and return to the families the unidentified remains of 27 individuals, including Becky Burke. To date, some remains have been housed at the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office. Others have been buried and will be exhumed to begin the process of identification. This work is truly a collaboration, and I'd like to recognize my team and our partners in this newly formed task force. From the DA's office, we have Director of Major Crimes, Lance Cross, Deputy Chief Assistant District Attorney Shannon Hodder, Supervising Investigator Matt McClendon, and our Grants Director Ross Harris. The DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office under the leadership of Director Pat Bailey. The GBI under the leadership of Director Michael Register, who could not be here with us today. The FBI, the DeKalb County Police Department, and our private lab partner, Innovative Forensics Investigations. At this time, I'd like to invite Director Pat Bailey of the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office to offer his remarks before answering any questions. Thank you, Madam District Attorney. Again, my name is Patrick Bailey, uh, the Director with the DeKalb County Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say thank you, Madam DA and your team with the DA's office, along with stakeholders with the state, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations, the FBI, uh, and many private partners and this collaborative effort. Uh, we couldn't do it by ourselves. Uh, we're a small entity with a big footprint, but when people show vested interest in this and they put you know, their efforts with staffing and whatnot, it is a huge deal. And yet again, the results of that is now we have a name for Rebecca. Uh, so that is a big deal uh, for a family who noticed that she went missing, didn't have a clue as to what happened to her. We can now start providing those answers to families. Um, I'd like to take a moment to express our thanks to those individuals 30 years ago when I was a baby officer, so to speak, uh, who, did, who laid the foundation for the work that we did today. Uh, their exhaustive efforts working the scene, running down viable leads at that time, and of course, science progresses and evolves. Uh, they laid the foundation for what we were able to pick up the ball and do with today. So thank you for those efforts and thank you, Madam Day, for the work we're doing. Any questions?
52. 52. Okay. She's 52. 52. So thank, <laughs> thank you, Director Bailey, and uh, please be on the lookout for more information that we'll be sharing later um, about uh, a missing persons event that our task force will be hosting and DNA Drive on Saturday, May 20th, as the date gets closer. That will be an event for those persons that are interested in locating missing family members. We look forward to finding justice for Becky Burke and working together with our partners to bring closure to the community and the loved ones of these 27 still unidentified individuals. Thank you at this time, I'm happy to take any questions. What does the DNA drive look Well, this is gonna be a, an opportunity for us first and foremost. Um, this is new, a new venture, but we will be bringing people out who will have an opportunity to discuss whom they're missing, um, or persons that they believe went missing in DeKalb, share information with us, and have an opportunity to submit DNA if in fact they believe that it's possible that one of these 27 individuals um, could be a family member that they, they know has gone missing. So it's not that painful or that traumatic. It's more or less a buccal swab. Uh, small Q-tip, we kind of swab and let you kind of do it to have fun with it, and then we submit it, package it up to be sent to a private lab. So it's nothing where we want to draw blood or anything like that. It's, it's more or less so we inform you on the process. We take that specimen, package it up right there in front of you, and then we send it off to a private lab. We try to keep you informed on the process. Just to clarify, there are already 27 individuals who've been identified and now you're just trying to, or 27 individuals who are missing and now you're just trying to match who these people are with potential members. Correct? Correct. They are unidentified. We don't know who they are. So we are trying to match them um, and DNA and genetic analysis is, is the, a new procedure that we can use to link someone to a specific family. I was here last year for the, the Sean case and so I guess it that was kind of like the first end of the picnic to kind of start the ball rolling for this. How long did it take for you guys to identify her in that time period, I guess, once y'all kind of realized, okay, we can use this for other uh, cases? I'm guessing it didn't take all year, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, obviously, uh, writing for the grant, I mean, working on the Deshaun Hamilton case was, um, for our office, just really um, thoughtful and justice-minded work that we wanted to continue. And of course, working with our partners, we understood that we had 27 other identified persons. And we are always looking for, obviously this can't be done without money, because a lot of this work, obviously all of the testing, requires the use of private labs. And so getting this grant really was the impetus to be able to be able to do that work. And you know, um, senior assistant Shannon Hodder, um, had this case kind of at the top of her list because we had some leads that would allow us to go in that direction. And of course, getting the money and being able to do the testing allowed us to kind of confirm. So I guess time frame wise, especially if you're gonna have the DNA uh, you know, drive, what, what are you looking at in terms of you know, maybe having some answers for folks? Once you get that DNA and kind of run into the system, you all have kind of, is it like months, weeks? I'd say it depends. I mean, um, you know, nothing is as, as simple as it ever seems. DNA is just one piece of the picture or puzzle. Um, it, it could give us a lead as to, I mean, I likened it to, I mean, we all are super familiar now with Ancestry and 23andMe um, and the idea that you can use DNA to um, reunite families and find distant people that you did not know you were related to, including some celebrity or, you know, president from 70 years ago, right? I mean, that's exciting and interesting. That's a lot of what this work is going to help us to do. Um, but now we're actually going to be able to lend um, closure and justice to families who, who, who have someone that went missing and they don't know, they assume that person is now deceased, but haven't had closure. Did you, when you said Becky was found, did you say that her teeth no, her wisdom teeth were removed. That was a part of her dental records. That was not a part of the, the crime. And you, 
I, I can't remember if you said that you talked with her family, and if you did, what was their reaction when, when um, you figured it all out? I mean, it, you talked about closure. Right. Well, I'll actually call up um, Shannon Hodder, discuss that. She's had extensive talks with the family, and I'll let her share that information. So the family has been spoken with, and of course there was uh, some measure of relief in knowing some of the answers to the questions they had about their loved one. Um, but I don't think it's fair to say that they feel like they have closure at this time. Obviously, they've learned that they lost a loved one um, and that she had a very violent uh, um, death. And so they're looking forward to us continuing to pursue all the leads and hoping to give them more answers to what happened to their loved one. Is there the same person's report There was not. And, and let me just, just clarify, because we talk about having 27, 27 bodies, and, and um, um, Shannon brings up a really good point. 13 of those 27 are considered to be homicides, one an accident, one a suicide, and 12 undetermined. Um, so there, there's, this is a, a multi-layered process. I mean, identification in these cases is perhaps the first step. Um, reuniting families with um, the remains is another step, right? Um, but ultimately, as you can see, a number of these cases are considered um, homicide deaths. Um, and so getting the opportunity to first identify, which then allows us to then put out these types of bulletins and calls for information that will hopefully lead to us being able to hold someone accountable for her death in this case. But many times we can't hold anyone accountable if we can't put a name to the victim and then get an opportunity to have the public say, I knew Becky Burke, um, or I knew that location, or I have information about what have, might have happened to her 30 years ago. Why was it not possible to have to be able to solve the case until now? Identifying her, as, as we stated, um, with many of these cases, the reason they're cold and the reason that the person can't be identified is oftentimes the remains are found in a decomposed state. And in this case, the remains were decomposed. There was no identification on the body, a license or anything that could identify that body. And of course, if the person doesn't have their fingerprints in a system, um, then they are unidentifiable. Um, and if you don't have someone that maybe perhaps is looking for you in that specific place, um, not everybody that we find is someone that lives in that community. Um, it's like a needle in a haystack sometimes when people go missing um, because they can go missing anywhere but be from some other locale or location. Do you feel like the killer knew how to do this? Uh, we can't even begin to speculate that. I'm curious, um, in relation to this case specifically, you mentioned you've been in contact with the family. Once there, remain, once there was an idea that these remains may have matched your identity, was there a point where you had to go back and get more DNA from the family even recently in order to help identify her? That yes, part? that was a part of the process. The family helped us in, 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 in determining that this was, in fact, their loved one, Becky Burke. Um, so they, they were willing participants to give us DNA swabs that allowed us to make that connection. So there was nothing already that they had they'd given to you? No. Uh, as far back as 1987. What was the most recent? The most recent would be 2020. Uh, to go back and check specifically for 2020. Be the most recent. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and we look forward to giving you more updated information as we uh, continue the work. Thank you so much.